Welcome back to another episode of Husky Meg. I'm Alexis Pearson, and by my side is the always stylish Robbie Jackson, putting me to shame over here. Look at that. Look stylish. at that tie. You got it, Robbie. And after that 6-3 victory against the Bulldogs, the Huskies shut out Concordia College on Saturday in a 9-0 victory. Abigail Cantor again was one of the stars on the day as she defeated her opponent Lisa Newman in her singles match and also defeated her opponents in her doubles match with her partner Mar Roque Diversi. And then once you get down below that, I mean, you don't very often see freshmen and 8th graders or 7th graders on the team. So it is a young team, which allows for building. It allows for um, kind of refocusing and redesigning what the team is like. Um, so in a couple years, it's going to be fun to see what this park team is made of. 27, Gage Davis. You've heard his name a lot. He gets the dunk against Mankato. My favorite part of this, the Cato players just kind of shrug their arms. They're just amazed with him as we are. What a great play by Davis. No matter your method, there are many ways to win at the racetrack. But I think your best bet is maybe paying attention to the handicappers and making smart wages. And Saturday, the Huskies saw better results in an OT nail-biter at intermission. The Huskies trailed the Beavers 36-28, but a 51-point second half for the Huskies would outdo the Beavers 43 points in the half and send the game to overtime. Park Cottage Grove, 83.3% of the penalty kill. Pretty close to uh, what the Packers were on the penalty kill. So it'll be a nice matchup here for this power play for the Packers. And James Plesky finished in fourth place, which is really awesome. Uh, we're going to see a lot more from him. This is really good news for the Huskies, knowing that they're going to have someone with such young talent be able to come back year after year. So that's a really good finish for him this year. Everybody likes to pick winners, and Canterbury Park has always been home of great public handicappers and horse players to help find your way. Here are five of my all-time favorites. And the wrestling season may be over, but the praise for this talented team is definitely not. Head coach Steve Costanzo was named NSIC Wrestling Coach of the Year. This award was earned by him coaching his team to an overall record of 17-1 and a perfect 8-0 conference record. The Huskies have won six straight NSIC championships under Coach Costanzo and have not lost a conference dual match since 2011. Now the Huskies looking for the sweep. The Chargers get on the board first. Josh Kessner streaking down the slot. Bates Driscoll the drop and fires into the open net. Let's take another look at that one. Beautiful play by Kessner. Yeah, so obviously they're back-to-back -back national champions. They were looking for the three-peat this year. Unfortunately fell just short of that three-peat. Falling to second place with uh, Notre Dame taking first place. Notre Dame of Ohio. Um, but actually they made it a pretty impressive comeback. They were sitting at fifth place um, at the end of day one. And then coming back up to second place for day two. Which shows a lot of resistance. I'm here with national wrestling champion Brett Velasquez. Now, Brett, the season is just mm -hmm. starting, but let's talk a little bit about last season. So the team has won back-to-back -back national mm -hmm. titles. Talk to me a little bit about what it's like to be a part of a team like that. It definitely was, Robbie, and this was a goaltender's duel from the very beginning till the end. It looked like it could go all night. Both goalies stood on their heads and also had a little luck from the crossbar. Goaltender's best friend, Robbie. Now, Robbie, let's talk some Husky wrestling. They're one of the best teams on campus, and there's never a shortage of good news from the Husky wrestling team. And this weekend, they put on yet another show for the home crowd on senior night for 12 of their Husky wrestlers. Now, there's been some changes that have gone on the team with some coaching changes and some roster changes. Now, there was only like four roster changes, but it's only like a nine-man roster, mm -hmm. so that kind of changes the team a lot. So talk about some of those changes a little bit. Out front. Oh, great opportunity by Press, but just wide. Speaking of success, it's that time in the show where we reveal our Meg Player of the Week. We might as well throw a picture of a brick wall up on the screen because that's what Jeff Smith was this weekend. Jeff Smith marked his eighth and ninth wins of the season against Miami University in his team sweep this weekend. you got to be strong on the passes, especially in the neutral zone because that's how odd man rushes happen. That's how you end up taking a penalty, avoid, trying to avoid an odd man rush. And um, in a playoff game like this, when your team's down two goals, I, I would hope that you'd be making a little bit stronger passes than that, looking for your players trying to connect on those passes. I'm Alexis Pearson. Alongside me is my boy, Robbie J. We'll see you next week, same time, same place.